we are delighted and honored to have you. That was so inspiring. When someone shares their story, number one, we're, I guess, double grateful, you know, that she can be open to share, you know, those stories. But it's also inspiring on a different level because it opens you up, you know, to understand the truth at its most basic level. Our next and final speaker, at least for the keynote, is no stranger to the platform, Mr. Leke Alder. You know, amazing. It's always an honor. Mr. Leke Alder has been here for, I think, up to 15 of our 30, or about 14 of our 30 editions at the platform. He's here. So please, a special, a special platform applause for him. Just before I read his bio. Thank you so much, sir. Lake Alda is the founder and principal of Alda Consulting, Nigeria's leading creative intelligence firm with offices in Lagos and London. He's credited with introducing branding as a discipline to Nigeria and has consulted on policy, politics, and business at the highest levels internationally and locally. Lake Alda wrote the blueprint of Nigeria's image management program, the Heart of Africa Project, and was the chief consultant to the federal government on the project. He was a member of the steering committee for the World Economic Forum on Africa, which held in Nigeria, and the, the chairman of the subcommittee on media, host broadcasting, and advertising. He has served as a panelist at the annual Africa Business Conferences of Harvard Business School, Watson Business School, and Kellogg School of Management. Leke Alda is a celebrated author, lawyer, polymath, and philanthropist. He's a patriot and Nigerian, married to Morenike, and blessed with two children, Olamide and Oluwa, and Toluani. Let's welcome once again, humbly, but with so much joy and excitement, Mr. Leke Alda to the platform. If local, think global. The platform is powered by the Covenant Nation. The platform. You can hear me? Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. I, I, I want to, I mean, this is the 15th edition of the platform. Please give me a round of applause. Sir. Talk about consistency. You know, Pastor Koju has been consistent. Why you guys, you're not clapping very well. I, I, I suspect that you guys have not taken lunch. So, so right after this program, we're all going to Pastor Koju's house. Uh, my friend is here with me. Uh, Mr. Bimbo Olashore was the MD of Leeds Merchant Bank and also chairman of Capital Projects. Where is he? Okay, that's him in front. He has come to give me moral support because he thinks that you guys are going to intimidate me. <laughs> I also bring greetings from um, Mrs. Alder. Uh, without her, I can't do what I do. She manages my life, administers my life, makes sure that there's peace at home and there's love and there's care. I will, I will marry her 200 times all over again. Now, about three or four years ago, there were discussions about platform. You know, some people were complaining online and said, all they do is all they do is all they talk, is the talk that they talk. And I said to them, these people don't get it. Information is the most valuable commodity on the face of the earth. So much so that the Son of God had to change his name to what? So that it can become information. So you need information. Now I brought some pots and plants here because I want to share some high level stuff with you. The main thing is to prove to my wife that I can cook. She thinks I'm spoiled, that my grandmother spoiled me, my mother spoiled me. It's not my fault, I'm an only child. I'm supposed to be spoiled. <laughs> So I brought some pots and pans and con some condiments and everything because I want to illustrate some things with you. Can somebody bring me firewood so that I can, you know? <laughs> now I have some condiments here.
proof that I know how to cook. <laughs> My wife has also said that these are glass uh, covers, that if I break them, a pastor for you will pay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Pastor Pedro. Let me start with some statistics before we go into the pots and the pans, and I'm going to call somebody out very soon. Can I have the statistics, please? My first slide. Okay. Now, 80% of new, this statistics is from Status Magazine, entrepreneur.com, and, you know, CEO, CECO. Okay? 80% of new businesses will survive the first year. It means that the mortality rate is about 20 to out of 100, every 100 business, 20 will die. Now, I'm not saying that so that it discourages you or it affects your faith. It's to make sure that you're on the other side of the equation, the 80% side. So first year, about 20% will die. Only 30% of businesses will be around in 10 years. And you can even see the mortality rate even among Nigerian banks. Those that were there 10 years ago, most of them are no longer here. You know, you can see that. 45 is the average age of successful startup founders. That's the average age. And that's because there's a lot of maturity at that age, and there's a lot of emotional intelligence, and you've learned a lot as you go along. Um, 30 businesses founded by under 30, businesses founded by under 30s often fail due to lack of experience. You know, I asked somebody one day that if I give you one million, what are you going to do with it? Oh, he said, I'll rent a new office, I'll buy new computers, and then the money is gone. <laughs> the money is gone. There's not enough wisdom on what is important and what is not important. Last figure, 52, lack of good team and illiquidity account for 52% of business failures. Now let me show you some notable business failures so that you don't think it's only SMEs that fail. Look at all these organizations. Blackberry, can anybody remember Blackberry? Uh, you guys are old, though. <laughs> Nokia. You know the funny thing about Nokia? Nokia got it right from the very beginning. It was a rubber company. They foresaw the communications industry. They went into it and then started designing phones that look like football and look like, you know, and instead of focusing on the technology, they started focusing on stylicisms. Kodak. You guys have killed Kodak. No more films, nothing. Blockbuster. It's been replaced by Netflix, isn't it? Okay. And lastly, Enron. I don't know how many people remember Enron. It was killed by lack of um, values. Okay. So, reasons for their failing, not innovating fast enough, character deficits, complacency, new technologies. Now, can I have somebody here, you know, please, you have to meet the strict criteria, the criteria that I'm laying out. You've been dating a guy for one or two years, he's not proposing. <laughs> I want to give you a strategy. After this demonstration, it will propose. <laughs> so please, can I have a female volunteer? You've been proposing to a guy. Can I have an extra microphone, please? Wow. Come on. Please come forward. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I don't get it. You know, I, I don't get it. You know, religious people keep on shouting, I'm a man of valor. I'm a woman of valor. Now, prove your... And you're suddenly cowardly. Okay, one volunteer, please. One beautiful volunteer. Any lady. Don't worry, we are not going to mess you up. I just want you to teach us some things. Give her a round of applause. Now, 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 this is my problem. Why are you rushing? Walk confidently like somebody is about to get proposed to. Because... Please come forward. <laughs> you can come up here. How are you? Fine, sir. Please don't be shy around me, you know. Uh, you can't be shy. 
Okay. Okay. So, what's your name, please? Antoinette. 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 That's, that's a good name, okay? And you have this guy who hasn't proposed for the past two years or three years. No, no, no. But you said any volunteer. <laughs> But you have a boyfriend. Ah, it's complicated. Ah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, don't mind them. Things do get complicated. Okay. We will solve the complication tonight. I'm a consultant, you know. I'm a strategy consultant. I specialize in branding. By the end of my speaking, it will be less complicated. <laughs> okay, so let's devise a strategy, okay? What I want you to do is to agree with me that the best way to get this guy to buy you a ring is through a well-prepared meal. Does, does that work sometimes, women? It doesn't work. Why do, why do you guys... Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Why do you guys want to spoil my assumption? Okay, let's assume that it works. Okay. Okay, so what I want you to do is that you are going to prepare a special meal for this guy. Okay? So what will you do in order to prepare this special meal? And let nobody say that I don't know how to prepare breakfast. The last time I was in Mr. Lashore's house in London, I actually put bread on my, put butter on my bread, and I ate it for breakfast. <laughs> Is it not breakfast? Thank you. So what will you do? What do you want to cook, first of all? Maybe I'll look for his best meal. No, no, tell us. You have to be more specific. What do you want to cook? Swallow, rice? Swallow. You want to cook swallow. What kind of swallow do you want to cook? Um, maybe semo and eforero. Semo and eforero. <laughs> it's okay. It's called Afro hip hop. <laughs> okay. So what do you do to cook this food? I'll go shopping. You go shopping. Okay. So what are you going to buy? I'll buy a pack of semo. A pack of semo. I'll buy a furrier leaf. Okay. I'll get oil. I'll get oil. Then all my condiments. Okay. Don't mind all these guys that are talking. Some of them think that semo grows on trees. <laughs> okay, so now you bought all these things and then you go home, right? What do you do next? Mm, I begin to prepare. You prepare? I'll okay. put everything on fire. I'll put everything on fire but not the house on fire. No, no. <laughs> okay. Now, 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 when you finish preparing everything, what now happens? Mm, I must have arranged like a meeting first and foremost. Okay, that makes sense. Then, of course, it must be prepared before he gets there. Okay, so the table is prepared. You yes, set the table. the table is set. Uh, okay. And just in case he'll be late, I make sure it stays warm. Okay. Don't mind them. They're all getting ideas. After saying that it won't work, now it's suddenly looking like something that can But just, let's just ignore them, okay? So now you prepare this. And what do you do with the context, the mood? Do, do you put on music? Do you, you know, like I need someone, you know? Okay. I must have set some nice dishes, like okay. special dishes on the table. Then. Like, not bright lights. <laughs> Makes sense. Some scented candles here and there. No, just wait till then. Yeah. It makes sense now. You want her to be praying praise worship music. Okay. Then music, like you said. It will come. Okay. Now let's imagine that 
This food which you prepared is so scintillating it is guaranteed to satisfy the most discriminatory palate. And then he eats the food. What do you expect? Depends on the person. <laughs> no, a normal guy. He might not be impressed and he might be. Do you expect appreciation? Yes, I expect Okay, if, so he, ex if he expresses appreciation, is there a chance, there's this chance, is there a chance that you may prepare a second meal for him if he expresses deep appreciation for what you've done? A second meal, another day. Like food. Yes, food. <laughs> another day, or that same day. I'm wondering. I hope. Pass, pass up for you. Listen. I hope you guys know that with all these interjections, you are wasting my time. We are going somewhere. Okay, so if he says, oh, what's your name again, please? Antoinette. Antoinette, okay. So what if he says, Antoinette, I, I beat my tongue while eating this food. It's just incredible, you know. And it, it's the plate, the setting, everything is as incredible as you are. So, like on another day? Yes, will you? Say? Yeah. Sure, I will. Sure, okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what Antoinette has described to us is a business process. Okay? Now, you have experience cooking, don't you? I do. Um, you're also going to buy condiments. Now, a consultant will call all those things impute. Isn't that so? Okay? Can I have the chart on the board? I'm seeing some chart in front of me. Okay? Okay, so let's go here, Antoinette. Let's go here. So, all those experience, the fire, the condiments, the semovita that grew on tree, everything I will call impute. Do you agree? Yes, Does sir. anybody disagree that there's impute? Okay? Then the process of cooking the food is what a consultant will call throughput. Okay? okay? Then after she's cooked the food, the plate that is prepared, what is left on the table is what is called output. Okay? And then when she sets the table and she plays that music and creates the atmosphere and there's a candle that is burning and all that stuff, that is called push food. And what's the name of this guy? Okay, let me prophesy John. Okay, so John is a client. Okay, but do you get it now? So what you describe for us is input, throughput, output, push food, and client. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the reasons business fail is not because Nepal took light. Because sometimes you read things and you say businesses fail, businesses fail, businesses fail. If you want to learn about business success, you've got to learn about business obituaries. Do you understand? So where you are likely to fail is at six points. You are likely to fail at input, or throughput, or output, or push foot, or the client. You are likely to fail. These are the five notes of failure. There's a sixth one which we are going to introduce. But you are likely to fail about six places. And if I were you, I begin to ask myself, where am I failing now? Do you understand? Maybe you are not bringing your experience to pass. Maybe your input is not enough. Maybe they say, okay, let, let me go further, okay? Oh, I can't see the chat. Don't worry, just leave me an Anthony out of it. I mean, today is today. John is going to propose. Okay? Now, notice that there's an arrow from client that turns into feedback and then goes back into input. Isn't that so? In other words, when John says, Antoinette, this is a fantastic meal, that is what you call feedback. Because in every endeavor, whether love or anything, there must be an emotional reward. Isn't that so? So when you get that feedback, you feed it back into input. Because so when next you are preparing another meal, you know now the amount of salt, you know the amount of maggi to put, you know the amount of condiments and everything. That goes into input. Therefore, without feedback, you don't have complete input. Some of you do business and you don't ask your clients, how was the job? 
failure loading because there's no feedback. And let me explain, Antoinette, please, let's give her a round of applause, please. <laughs> but, 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 but if you want to stay on the stage with me, you are welcome. I mean, can I have a chair for Antoinette, please? <laughs> okay, so that's why I brought the pots. Because the only thing you can do with those pots is throughput. Now, what is the problem? There's a lot of things in input, and I'll show you a wider graph, a wider chart, break it down for you so that you can see. The problem is that people don't concentrate on each of these elements, and therefore they fail. For example, most of the time when people come to me, especially young people, they come to me that they have a business idea. And when I listen to the business idea, you know that there's a logic that is failing in the business idea. There's just a logic. Every business idea has a logic. If the logic, if it does not make sense, you're already going to fail before you've even started the endeavor. Throughput. Your organization, your systems. You know, there are people here who don't want to employ others and they think that they are saving money. They don't know that they are destroying the organization. If the gap between you and the next person to you is so wide that if you don't give direct instruction, there's something wrong with the organization. Now, can I have the full thing? Let me explain. So for impute, what skill do you have? What expertise do you have? What experience do you have? What is your ideation? Can I have one or two volunteers, please, and to come forward with their business cards? We're learning. Please don't be shy. One or two people come forward with your business card. Please come forward. Let's be fast. You say, I want this to be interactive because this is the age in which we are in. Give them a round of applause. You get free consultation, so you better make it fast. Okay, now don't give me the card yet, okay? So what? It's okay, okay. It's okay. You can, you can join them. What do you do, sir? I'm into real estate. What does that mean in English? Okay, so love, so exactly. Do you understand? I'm into real estate. You are into what? As a pastor or... So I sell properties. You sell properties. Therefore, isn't it better for you to put... What's the name of your business? Massive properties. Let me see. What, what did you call your business? On the, is there a description of your business? Yes. Please. Oh, my God. It's a whole book at the back. Now, the average person is not going to have time to read all this. You've got to be able to reduce all this and condensate all this into just a few words. That is so descriptive. It gives you the total picture of what you do. And I want to do business with you because nobody does this to the general manager. Backwarding, forwarding, general management. Nobody is going to remember you because there's no specificity. So when they are doing curtains, you are there. When they want to buy brooms, you are there. I mean, APC wants to buy brooms. PDP wants to buy umbrellas, you volunteer. Okay? So read all the things that are at the back for me. Okay. Oh, can somebody please give me a microphone, please? Real estate brokerage, real estate advisory, property management, facility management, property development. Abba. <laughs> what do you do, sir? Yeah, I work for an organization, but this is my... Uh, you work for an organization? Yes, sir. At what level are you working? At the management. Uh, yeah, in management. What do you do? Yeah, I sell financial solutions. You sell financial solutions. solutions. What does that mean in English? <laughs> do you understand what I'm trying to say? Okay. If I don't understand what you are selling, how can I buy? Okay. Now, this card is going to travel... I, you know, I go to events and people give me cards. Half of those cards are going in dustbins because I don't know what they do. I don't know why I need to be keeping cards. I'm not a solid department. So tell me, what do you do? Okay, it's a mortgage organization. It's a mortgage organization. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's better. What else? Or oh, you are going to? Uh, that's that all. Mortgage so organization. what does your card say? My, my card says uh, this is a marketing uh, officer. Of what? Of a business solution in mortgage. Which does what? 
we sell mortgages. If you have to explain something to me three times, you remember when this card comes, you're not going to have a month to so explain to me. Uh, yeah. So you lose money okay. just by, I mean, you know, it takes talent to work against yourself. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. You must be able to, and it's not just at this level, SME level. Even though I know that some CEOs are here, even at the banking level, you still have the same mistakes, inability to describe succinctly what you do. Next person, please. What do you do? I'm an architect. I design. I can hear you, please. I said, I'm an architect. I design. You're an artist. House. What does your card say? I'm not an artist. Architect. You are an architect. Yes. Okay. So what does your card say? My card says designs and build. Designs and build. Now, now the problem with that is that you are talking to Mrs. I don't know what. <laughs> you are talking to architects because I know what design and build means. It means that your audience, this card is not meant for me. It's meant for your fellow architects. Because they are the ones who understand design and build. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Because it's a technical phrase. So sometimes also we're talking to technical people. We're not talking to the markets. And it's the market that is going to sustain you. Next question. So you have to change these cards. And it's not easy to arrive at it. You have to sit down and think and think and think and think until you arrive at it. When you arrive at it, you know. OK, yes. My name is Amal Miogbe. I am a PR consultant. We work okay. with individuals and organizations. Sorry, I, I can't hear you. Seriously? I'm wearing a mask, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you know I'm growing old, you know. No, my, my mask is um, affecting Okay, can me. you move up? Can you give us space so that you can remove the mask and talk to us? Okay. My name is Amaomi Ogbe. I am a PR consultant. Yeah, PR consultant. What does your card say? It says GLG Communications, creating bigger and better brands. It's too much. Why don't you just put, what's your name, please? Amal me, it has my name Amal me and just say PR consultant. It's, it has my name at the back. This is the front, and then it has this my name the at what? the back. This is the front of the company, the, the company logo and name, and then my name is at the back. I'm saying you don't even need two sides of this card. Okay. Do you understand? When your card starts becoming a brochure. <laughs> yes, ma'am. My name is Lola Day, and I recently just had a card. <laughs> when I left this staff of office, please be silent. Moses lifted a rod. Okay, please. My name is Lola Day. I'm a salon owner, and I recently just had a card. Not beca because I thought it was not, um, <laughs> it wasn't necessary anymore. Because of social media. And now, now. <laughs> when I said you should come forward, you refuse to come forward. Now, the ones that are brave that came forward, you are now making fun of them. Pastor, could you please give me a round of, round of Moses? <laughs> yes, please. Okay, so when I eventually did, um, I'm a salon owner, like I said, and I have quite a few outlets. So I have the contact of all my outlets. Now, I want to know the description of the business. Uh, it says... It's my personal card. It says Fanny Moku Ololaje, director, head makeup artist, salon owner. <laughs> now, do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? And you can see this is a representative sampling. And if you look at your cards, most likely you are making the same mistake. Now, do you agree with me that none of them have described what they really, really do. They've not told me why I should patronize them. And it's a common problem. Now, don't forget, we are just talking about the what right now. When we get into branding, we're going to talk about the who. And that's another level entirely. We don't have time for that today. I need you to take a notebook and think and reduce this business description to something that the market understands and will make the market want to patronize you because you, you might as well not print any cards. And you are distributing thousands of these cards and you are not making sales and you don't understand why you are not making sales. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it's a common mistake. 
Even if you're a bank, we still want to know what kind of bank you are. Isn't that so? Okay, please give them a round of applause. Let them go to them. Can I have my chat, please? My chat. Time is running out, but I need to explain one or two things to you. Now, when you look at throughput, we are looking at organizational structures, efficiencies. I don't mean Nigerian tailor efficiencies. They take on too many clothes that they can't, you know, they can't sew, and they know they can't sew them in time, and then keep on posting everybody. And you're about to have your wedding and you're having hypertension because of your tailor. Client management, very important, but that's also where your values and your culture comes in. Now, let me tell you a story. In my 20s, the Italian embassy contacted me and said that they want to start me doing jobs for them. They had seen some stuff that I had done, and they were very impressed. So this was good money. And then they called me one day, and they said to me, we're having an event. This is the, I was talking for the Italian embassy, Italian cultural institute, Italian international school, Italian wives clubs, and about five or so Italian organizations. I did not know them. They just saw my work. So anything you do, put your damnest best into it because you don't know what it's going to lead to. So I went there and they said, there's this event that we're going to produce in three days. Can you produce for us invitation cards and deliver within three days? We're going to have this event like in a week. And I gave my word that I can. So, because they trust me, they gave me the money and went to sleep. Now, I got to Shomulu, which was where I used to print as a young man. And on the day I decided to print, Nepal decided to show their true colors. All throughout Shomulu, no light. Then I said, oh, this is easy. We're going to get a generator. So we searched and searched and searched for generator in Shomulu. Unfortunately, we were searching on a Friday, and in Shomulu, everybody does party on Friday. Finally, we found one generator, and then we took it back to the printing press, and as we started the generator, it packed up, and I understood why we found the generator. <laughs> it was the only generator that everybody knew wasn't going to work. <laughs> and so I'm praying to God, and I say, God, I gave my word to these people. I've never failed them before. Just help me here. Just as I was praying, Nepal sprang back to life. But it was just enough to power the machine. I, have you ever seen a policeman's touch light in Nigeria? Touch. You know, it doesn't, you know, from here to there, one foot visibility. So they brought this light that we could not even see the work we were doing. So what was I doing? I put on the lights on my car and we'll mix ink with the lights of my car and then take it in with a torch and we were printing. As we were doing all that, Nepal struck again. I said, ah, they have followed me from my village. <laughs> then I saw light on the third street. I'm talking about 20, 20 something years ago, 25 years ago. On the third street, in those days, you could get the Nepal official to bring you light from that third street to where you are. Now, this was no longer about money. I didn't care how much I spent. It was now about integrity. So I got the Nepal official. While they were doing that, Nepal took light on that third street. Somehow, somehow, I completed this job. Somehow, somehow. And I went home, took my bag, changed. And I marched straight into the Italian embassy, and I gave them the job. And I never told them what it took to produce those cards. Why? Because the client does not want to know about your efforts. Your client only wants results. So don't go to your client and say, and when I took bus, then from there I took Okada. When I got to the roundabout, then there was one Egun like this that was waving at me. Then nothing went much, and Musa not go see for gates. And as I saw Musa, I saw Femi too. And I, no, don't, don't, don't do that. In other words, throughput, which is what I'm telling you. Remember, input was all my ideas, all my design, all my ideation. Isn't that so? Now, throughput, the client is not interested in throughput unless you're a civil servant. 
in which case we have to push the trial from table to table to table. Who cares about that? And so don't ever go to your client and be saying, oh, Nepa took light. When you took the job, didn't you know that there was a reality called Nepa? So don't tell me that. So I want you to say after me, throughput should not be reported. Now let's look at output. When Antoinette prepared the food, is it the same she served the food? Is it the same as leaving the food in the pot? Assuming that John came and then Antoinette came and said the food is in the pot, is it the same effect? No. So she took time to serve the food. Now the problem is that most of us don't know the difference between output and product. There's a difference. Output is a natural byproduct of a series of exercises. If you cook food and everything, it gets cooked, it's left in a pot, that is a natural byproduct of your exercises. Isn't that so? Okay? But output is not the product. You don't have a product until the client appropriates it. Because it is a client that determines your economic health. So some of you design things and it's fantastic and you're hallucinating over this fantastic product, but then you give it to the client and he says, what kind of crap is this? That's the best feedback you ever got. Don't take offense. Now I want you to repeat after me. Output is nothing. Output is nothing. Until you convert it to product. And then we take it up there to push food, branding, marketing, all those things. Now I want another set of people to come forward. Three people this time. Free consultation. I want to round up. Three people. There's no lady. Where's the cameraman? Can you give me your business cards? I want to look at their logos. Thank you. Okay, um, I don't know, how can we project this logo? Can somebody forget? You can't say the logo. But essentially, it's three children playing, and there's a globe in between, and everything. Well, why do you have the globe in between? Can somebody give her a mic, please? Okay, that's because um, the intention of our brand is to connect with children across the globe with our services. Okay. Like, we are a teacher training institute, and our intention is to see that any community, with, whether... Um, have you connected? We are connecting. You are connecting. Have you connected? Connected, not thoroughly. Yeah, you know, the thing is that you are using a common motif. Okay. So everybody... See, the fact that you have a logo doesn't mean you are a brand. Every business has a logo, but not every business is a brand. You understand? So you need to redesign this logo. To make it worse, your colors are dull. Okay. You understand? Look at the color. From the back. There's nothing wrong with white. Yes, and black. Ah, so you have... A, they, I, I'm confused now. <laughs> I'm confused because I see Educrest Ali Yes Institute. Are you an institute? A training institute. So why not... Training Institute for early years or whatever? Uh, because our focus is on early years practitioners only. Uh, but you are confusing us. <laughs> okay. You have to redesign this, okay? Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, can I see your card, please? First of all, your logo is too small. It's so tiny, it looks like text here. Okay. Um, Found and CEO, telephone. What does this company do? Uh, it's a booking platform for healthcare services. So why don't you put it there? My medic bank, medical bank, a booking platform for medical services. Yeah. Why? There's nothing wrong in being descriptive, real descriptive. Okay? Yeah. So you need to change the size of the logo. Yeah. You don't need this curved thing. Yeah. Okay? Can I see your card now? Okay? On a bag, see you. The text is too big for the size of the card. Listen to me. Listen to me. You see, when we do branding, listen, listen. 
Have you ever wondered why you find it easy to read some things and you don't find it easy to read some things? Let me give you an example. When we were designing a brochure at Alder Consulting, we measured eye gauge. We know from here to here, your eyes can capture it, but beyond that, you strain your eyes, and therefore you are going to be having pain in your eyes and will not want to read it. Sometimes it's like put what she's done, it's like buying an 85 inch television and putting it in a two by two room. You understand? You've got to get a specialist to do this for you. Okay? And again, what do you do? I'm an event planner, sir. It's not obvious. There's no description of your business on your business card. Why? She's looking at me. Don't oh, let me fight you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. You did not bring your card. And you are coming to an event like this where thousands of people are potential clients. What do you do? I'm a music producer. You're a music producer. How many musicians or body produce musicians are here? Look at your clientele. Next time, don't do that, okay? I came with my, with my phone, but I left it around to work. No, you're not going to be distributing your phone, are you? Is your name Samsung? No, but I have showed you, I have showed you my, my website. I would love to see it. Write me and show me your website. Do a screen capture, show me your website. I'll give you free consultation on it. All right, so I wish I could. Okay. Let's give them a round of applause. Now remember these words. I'm rounding up now. Repeat after me. Input, input. throughput, output, output. push foot, and then client. Now notice something on that board. I'm giving you final word now. Notice that output is depressed. Have you noticed? It's not on the same line as input, throughput, push foot, and clientele. Have you noticed? Now why did I do that? Because output is nothing. It is cost. It is cost. As long as it remains unsold, as long as the client has not appropriated it, you are running cost. It's an inventory. It's like renting a factory. You produce, you rent a factory, and you store products inside there. It's cost. You are not making any money. Now, some of you are too timid to show what you do. Let the market be the judge. Chances are that if you meet someone and you tell them you want to start a business, that they will discourage you. They don't mean to. Some are afraid for themselves. Some think that you are about to leave them behind. Some feel sorry for you. Some have failed in business. But let the market be the judge of your effort. And what you are going for at the beginning is just the acceptability of the market for your peculiar ideas. Don't try and be like everybody. There's something special about you. There's a way you see life. There's a way you see the market. There's a way you see people. My first breakthrough was at the age of 24, 25 or so, I can't remember. And what happened was that they had in, there was this big communications company and they had made zero sales in six months. Zero sales. Now, two young men had come to me and they said I should design a marketing material for them. The only problem was that they had zero cobalt. So I sent them away and I said, give me a week. So I did a business card that said they were selling brother typewriters. They had imported brother typewriters into the country. This was the days of typewriters. How many people know typewriters? Ah, thank God. Proof that I'm not too old. Okay? So they didn't have money for marketing. And then I did a business card for them that said, if brother typewriters had existed at the time of Moses, Moses would have used it to write the Ten Commandments. And they went out distributing these cards and they sold out all the typewriters. One of the companies that they sold to was a communications company. And they asked that question, who did this? Why? Because they had two advertising agencies handling their account and they had zero sales. So they said, I should put in my proposal. Now, at that time, don't forget, all I read in my life was law. I'm a lawyer. I didn't know anything about proposals. I'd never done one before. A proposal to me was something you said to a lady. <laughs> and then I kept on, what do I write? And I'm talking to some people here this afternoon. What do I write? 
So I called my pastor. I said, this marketing director has asked you to send in a proposal. What do I write? He said, you know too much already. Write what you know. That year, I studied the book of Proverbs all, the, all throughout the year. I mean, Proverbs was coming out of my nose. <laughs> and then I said, okay, what if I buy marketing books? Then it occurred to me that this is a marketing director. You have probably read all the books that I want to buy to read and regurgitate to him. So one day I just sat down and I began to write about this generation, their likes, their wants, their dislikes, how to sell things to them. I sent him a seven-page proposal, three pages of text, one of cover, one back cover, and then two illustrations of what I was doing in advertisement, advertisement form. And this guy took this proposal, looked at the first page, and said, excuse me, I want to go and talk to my managing director. So he goes off, comes back two minutes later, and says, excuse me, can you please follow me? Now, at this time, the model of income in the industry was advertising commission. The number of adverts you place, you get 15% commission or 20% commission. And he asked me that that's what they will pay me, and I said, no, that doesn't pay me because I am not Daily Times, I am not Guardian. What I'm selling to you is my intelligence. And this MD looked at it, looked at this thing, this crazy proposal that I put together, and said, so what do we pay all that consult? And I said, 400,000 naira. 400,000 naira will buy 10 Mercedes. And the guy said, done, on one condition, that you also handle my company in England. Now, the, what I'm trying to let you know is that there's something called the confidence of ignorance. The confidence of ignorance comes upon you when you don't know how to do something very well, but you put in your creative best and it comes out looking great and different. Have the confidence of ignorance. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless you. Please, a round of applause. A resounding round of applause for Mr. Alda. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Like we said, we're going to have a panel discussion with all of our wonderful speakers, the powerhouses of Yvonne, Audrey, and Prof in the house, and all of our men in black. <laughs> and so please, all of us who have questions, if you're in the hall here, you actually have the option of passing your physical questions. Just write it on a little sheet of paper and pass it down to the ushers. The ushers are actually even already holding sheets of paper, so you can just request one and write your question. And then for those of us online, you can just go to www.theplatformnigeria.com and forward slash questions, you would be able to access it. It's a simple link. So the, the link again is www.theplatformnigeria.com forward slash questions. I know some questions were already sent before. You don't need to send them again. It's the same link, www.theplatformnigeria.com forward slash questions for your questions to come through. Thank you. So please just be seated, just be seated as we set up for the panel discussion. Thank you. Live local, think.